Hi again, so welcome to another part, part 4, where I'm going to teach you all about electronic components, pictures, names, functions, and of course, how to test it using the multimeter. Okay, so let's get started. So the last component that we have seen in the part 3 is switched. So for switch it, we have basically two kind of switch that you can find in every motherboard. So you can find ASMD switch like this one or surface mounted device. As you can see, it is mounted directly to the motherboard and THT switch, okay, or true hole technology switch. So here for this switch, we have, as you can see here, terminals, okay? So this is basically the symbol for this switch, okay? This is a push button. So to check whether the switch is good or not using the multimeter, you can just put one probe here and the other probe over here and press the switch. If you hear a buzzer, means the switch is good. If you don't hear a buzzer, means the switch is failed. Of course, you should put the multimeter to the buzzer option or continuity option. So let's see the next component. Here we have ICs, okay? So of course, there is many type of integrated circuit. Here we have DL line packages, okay? DL line packages means, as you can see here, the, term the terminals are in both sides, as you can see here and here. That's why we called it DL. Okay, and here as you can see, we have quad align packages. I see as you can see here, quad means the terminals are in four sides, as you can see. Okay, so how can we test this kind of component? So, to test, to test this kind of component using the multimeter, it's not easy, it's not like a diode or a transistor. No. You cannot test it normally. To test this kind of component or to check whether this component is good or not, you should use three methods. So the first method by using, by checking the heat of the IC, using your finger or a thermal camera. So if you find that the heat of this IC is very increased, the the IC is very hot, means automatically that this IC is damaged. This is the first method. The second method, by checking the ceramic capacitors around the IC, okay? The ceramic capacitors around the, the IC, because for every IC, you will find ceramic capacitors around it. If you find that more than one ceramic capacity capacitor is shorted to the ground means the IC is damaged, okay? The third method by using the multimeter, but how you can use the multimeter to check this IC because we have a lot of terminals over here. So to check whether the, this IC is good, is serviceable or not using the multimeter, you should have the data sheet of the IC in order to identify the inputs of the IC and the outputs of the IC. And of course, you should power it with the power and then check the inputs. If all inputs are good and the outputs are missing, means the IC is bad. But if you find, for, for example, that one input, for example, 19 volt or enable signal or clock signal is missing, means the IC is not the bad component. You have a problem with the inputs. So, by checking inputs and outputs. So, I have a question here. Inputs means what? Inputs means the conditions, the requirements that this IC need to be operated to work correctly, including input voltage 19 volt for example including the clock signal or the timing about 1.5 volt or 2 volt including also enable signals okay 
power good signals, shutdown signals, etc. Okay, I, I will teach you everything in the next videos about inputs, outputs, everything. Just please, if you don't subscribe to the channel, just subscribe to receive a notification for next videos. Okay, so and never check the IC directly in its terminals. No, you should always use extensions. Okay, extensions. This is a ve this is a very important trick that I'm going to teach you how to use the extensions to check the IC. Okay, because if you want to check it directly in, in this terminals, you can't make a short circuit. Okay, so let's see the next component. So here we have transistor. So we have here THT transistors because we have here terminals, as you can see. So basically for transistor, we have base, emitter, and collector. Okay. So this kind of transistor basically is what is P in P transistor. Why? Because we have this arrow is is goes from emitter to base is penetrates. And when the arrow is in this direction, the transistor, we called it NPN transistor. And please, I have a tip here. Never replace a PNP transistor with NPN transistor or the inverse. Replace a damaged NPN transistor with PNP transistor. Never do that because you will burn it automatically. Okay, so let's see the next components we have THT MOSFET as you can see here so basically the transistor and MOSFETs are are uh, slightly the same but there is a slight difference okay for the MOSFET we have drain gate and source gates is like the base for the transistor okay so inside the MOSFET we have here a diode so to check this MOSFET you can just put the multimeter to the diode option and then check between source and drain okay you should find when ready between source and drain here if you put the red probe and the black probe here of the multimeter you will get a reading about 700 drop voltage means the MOSFET is good but if you get a buzzer or a very low drop voltage means the MOSFET is damaged. Okay, so let's check or let's see the next component. Here we have on off button, simple, easy. We have a button here with on and off. This is its schematic. Here we have on off. Okay, so it's simple. Let's see the next component. Then we have the DC battery, as you can see here, 19 volt DC battery. Always, this is the symbol for battery. We have plus and minus. Also, this is very simple. So let's see the next component. Then we have amplifier. Do you see the amplifier? The amplifier basically is an integrated circuit, as you can see over here. Okay. Here we have the schematic of the amplifier. Okay, we have here the V out, and here we have two voltages, V plus and V minus, and we have the V S plus and V S one. So basically, the amplifier is used to amplify the signals and to make uh, a slight comparison between signals. We're gonna see the amplifier in a separate video. Okay. Then let's see the next component. We have here the electrolytic capacitor. This is basically THT through three hole technology electrolytic capacitor, as you can see over here. We have the terminals here. Okay, this capacitor is polarized capacitor. We have here plus and minus. This capacitor is used to filter the voltage or the current. Okay. Always after the bridge rectifier in every electronic motherboard, you will find this capacitor. Okay, so let's see the next component again. Here we have the BIOS or basic input output system. Basic input output system where we have eight pin. Of course, this kind of BIOS. This is the the chip that is used always or usually in 
uh, recent motherboard okay and the BIOS is one of the most important component why because if this IC is damaged the laptop or computer would stop working definitely okay or yes completely for the BIOS we have eight pin as you can see always the pin number eight is for VCC it holds 3.3 volt <coughs> The pin number four is always connected to the ground and here of course pin number one pin number two uh, this is basically data output write project we have here data input we have here dock lock about 1.5 volt and we have the halt input output okay so of course if you have if you have a, a damaged bias you should flash it or reprogram it using a, a rock programmer okay to flash the BIOS, you need the BIOS itself. You, you need a raw programmer or a programmer. You need the software that you, you should use to, to program it and do the bin file. Okay, the bin file in order to replace the damaged one. So let's uh, see the next component. So here we have the integrated circuits also. This one we called it large scale integration. LSI as you can see. LSI, this is a very big IC as you can see a lot of pins. Okay, this is basically this is its reference. For example, if you get a damaged one like this, you should use this reference over here. As you can see, this reference to find it or to replace it with the same of course I see or another I see with the same characteristics okay so to check or to test this I see you should use one of three methods that we have seen before to check it the heat if the heat is very increased if you have the, the thermal camera you can use the thermal camera if not you can use just a flux or your finger but pay attention it could be very hot so if the IC is very hot, means automatically damaged, you can use the ceramic capaci capacitors around it. If the ceramic capacitors around it is shorted, means automatically the IC is shorted. Or you can use the data sheet and check and whether all inputs are present. If all inputs are present and the outputs are not, means the IC is bad. Okay? So this is it for today for today video so we're gonna see the rest of component tomorrow or even today so thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe like the video and share the video and of course for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page you are very welcome in my Patreon page, I share in a daily basis laptop schematics, many tips and tricks and secrets on how to repair efficiently computer and laptop motherboard. Thank you very much and see you with the next video.